and then it will snap. That is just a poor design and it feels like everything should be where it needs to be. Hello ladies and gents, today I'm going to be doing a month review of the Win Wing Orion Hotas F18 replica. Hope you guys enjoy. So it's been about a month since I did my unboxing video. I thought I'd do just a general review of how I'm finding the Hotas system, positives and negatives, how it's like to use configuration, SIMAP Pro and a few other bits and bobs. Okay, so we're going to start off with the negatives of the throttle. And first of all, let's talk about the actual throttle quadrants themselves. The first problem that I have is the separation. Now, the separation is with this little toggle at the bottom here. And although it's easy enough when you're not in VR, when you're in VR, it's very, very fiddly. And to be honest, I have to look up every time I want to separate the throttles. Now, generally, I don't really separate them in when I'm playing, but some people might like to, depending on the aircraft you fly. It is an easy enough up and along, but sometimes it's a little bit sticky on that along because it's a magnet, so you have to actually put a bit of pressure on it. If you're moving the throttle and doing it at the same time, like, you know, look how my hand is like that. So it doesn't really work from that perspective, but you know, that, that's a little niggle. Second of all, when the throttles are connected, there is a tiny bit of wobble. And I don't know if you can see it, but it actually does register in game. Now, this isn't a big deal. It really isn't, but this is just a build quality thing. Obviously, I appreciate there has to be some sort of, you know, movement. You can't be extremely tight, but I have tightened the bolts and, you know, there's a, there is still a little bit of movement. Now, coming on to the big one, the detents. What can I say about the detents? Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. So, this throttle is designed to have modular throttle uh, quadrants on them. So, that means that the wires are exposed, but there actually isn't a mechanical detent where you have to lift the throttle up or move it in a certain way. It's done in cams, and you can see here where they, uh, they dip a little bit. So, you have the idle detent where you actually have to you know push it's not in the same and then you have a smooth transaction up to mil power and then you have to push the afterburner now the problem I have here is accidentally slipping into off mode uh, below idle now I can't tell you how many times it's happened I'm a bit more used to it now but the amount of times that I've been landing and I've reduced the throttle to idle and accidentally slipped like that in an F-18 the engine is just shut off completely then you lose all your electrical power because there's no generation from the engine so all your instruments go and you're flying dead stick when you're 100 feet from the ground there's a bit of a shock and you crash so that is not always helpful I've got a lot more used to it now but even in flight you sometimes you know you slip then you're like oh you quickly go back up it doesn't really affect it that much because the engines have to spool down first so it's really mainly a problem when you're on the ground between low power and idle that's that's a big problem the next we're going to go on to the buttons the only button i have a problem with is this button i use for my comm switch so i have push which is my discord push to talk um up which is srs com one and dcs com one and down which is SRS COM2 and DCS COM2. I haven't mapped the push in and the pull out yet. The problem I have is that I don't think it's built very well, this button. It feels nice. The up is good. The push is good. The down, see how I'm pushing it down and it doesn't click. Where if I push up, always clicks. Push forward, always clicks. Pull back, always clicks. Push in, always click. Push down, it's stuck. So you have to sort of wiggle it a little bit see it didn't even work that time and then it works so not great build quality on that i don't know if that is my hotas in particular or all of them so that's a negative for there the next thing is the tdc slew now there's actually nothing wrong with the tdc slew it's brilliant it's really nice to have i really like using it but when you go into simap pro and you have a look at how to configure it I've configured it, you can see there, I've configured it on the directional button toggle compared to the 
like gyroscope type where you can move it around. So the reason for that is, is because I want to use the TDC on other aircraft and not all other aircraft have an axis assigned for the TDC slew. Therefore, I have to use the switch mode so that I can use other aeroplanes to be able to use the TDC and, and keep the mapping without having to go into Simap Pro the whole time. So that was a bit of a niggle. I mean, it's not the worst thing, but the biggest issue with that is, is that when it's on the button select, um, sort of down, up, left and right, obviously you're losing accuracy. It takes a while for it to register. Whereas if it's in this axis mode, it, you know, it, it's in real time. Next is the AA and the AG buttons, so air to air and air to ground. Now, these are just stupidly placed. I mean, I don't even know what they were thinking because you can see here, right? This is the wire for the throttle linking to the base, obviously, you know, power and, and whatnot. Now, on the other side, they're both exactly the same. They're in both exactly the same position and tension. They look exactly the same on both sides. So, why is this button constantly resting on the AG button? And you can't see it that well in the video, but it does actually move the button. It doesn't press it, but it, uh, it's, it's, that, that is just a poor design in my in my eyes. And when, when you're on the throttle like this, you know, you can't really reach down for quick selection. So I end up just doing it with my VR headset and clicking it manually with the mouse button because it's quicker. So I think that is stupid. And, you know, say if your throttle's there, and you want to click air to ground you're clicking the wire you know you don't want that so all i could have done is moved it down an inch lower here because most of the time in flight right you're above idle aren't you you're above idle above sort of half mil power or in afterburner here would be a perfect placement because when you, the throttle is in idle you, obviously you're not really going to be using the air to ground and air to air modes because it's most likely that you're on the ground taxiing or landing or whatever so that was a stupid placement on their end. This button, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a non-specific button. That one's okay, because it's a little bit offset to the right. Don't really use that for much, but that one's okay. So the next thing is the labels. Now, this is not a big thing. This is just a personal niggle. I don't like how they've labeled stuff, because if you haven't mapped that thing, that button or toggle or switch to that, what it says, then what's the point it's just a bit annoying i mean i'm in vr and it's not a big deal that's annoying from a from a cosmetic point of view and for you non-vr users out there you know if you, if you if you've mapped this to something else that is not what it says and you're looking down just because there's a lot of buttons so it's hard to remember everything and you're looking down and you think oh that is my role heading select and then it's actually not so that's the only niggle. VR, not much of a problem. Non-VR, I can imagine it would be slightly annoying. Okay, so we're going to move on to the positives now of the HOTAS Throttle Quadrant. And I'm glad to say it's more positive than negative. Those negatives, you know, they're little niggles, but I've got to say it because it's a review. So we're going to start off with the buttons. Every button, every switch and toggle feels great. There is no inconsistency between alike buttons or toggles. They all feel fantastic. They all have a really nice tactile feel to them. You can tell the difference between what you're doing. And in VR, you, you know, you can very quickly decipher which ones you need to use. I like these axes, even though I haven't mapped them that much, what much to anything important, really. I think that one's for exterior lights and that one's for the HUD brightness. They've got a really nice detent to them and they, they stop in the middle and they go up. So if you use them for anything else, perfect ones at the back i love how they've incorporated the lightness of the flap switch similar to the actual one in the hornet it's flat with a flat end so in flight i know that if i want to put my flaps down i know that that's flaps and it's not going to put my gear or parking brake down and it's clever how they've done it how these are just two detents so that one's got three things on it but the landing gear is only going to have an up and down right so they've done that really well. The carry operations ones, they've, they've, they've placed them well because they're in the corner out of the way. You use them probably the least out of everything, but you know, they're easy to use enough and they feel good. And they also sound really good. Everything has a nice sound to it as well. Throttle wise, 
I've obviously everyone maps their stuff differently. I've done a lot of stuff is stock what I've done because I like how it is. And these buttons on the back, excellent feel, really nice. Toggle on the side, you can't really see it. Really nice. Three-way switch. I mean, I know that's for the exterior lights, but I use it for the canopy. So your back is um is closed, down is hold, up is open, because I'm not gonna accidentally hit that in flight. And I don't really, you know, the exterior lights, I, I use, I push these for the exterior lights, so it's not a big deal. That's good. TDC slew, good. Top button, which is your countermeasures. So push forward is flare, pull back is chaff or whatever you want. Push down I have as emergency dispense because it's harder to do. They, they've made it in a way where it sits really nicely on your thumb. Obviously, this is going to be the most important button that you have when you're flying in combat because you want to be flare or ch flaring or chaffing. And the comm switch, apart from that both bottom one, they're good. I like having it there because I can easily switch between. There's not a lot of hand movement. So I can have index finger on the TDC slew. I can have my middle finger and my end forefinger on those. The little finger is kind of supposed to go on that trigger at the back, but I don't really use it. So I've got those two there, TDC slew there. The one at the bottom, which is just free speed brake. I love that button. That's brilliant. It doesn't have a push functionality, but it's push out for extend, hold, pull back for pulling back. And then you have your uncage button. That is a really nice, solid button. They all feel different and they all have a nice tactile feel to them. So in VR, you know what they are. I like the heading and the core switches. Even though I don't use them for heading and course, they feel really nice. In Simap Pro, you can actually change the acceleration. So you see here, I've got it at five maximum because that's what I like to have it at. You can change the acceleration for all of them and you can actually turn them into different modes as well. So you can choose that on there. A nice little side thing is that you can actually alter the backlight intensity on Simap Pro. So you can see me going down now and going up and that, that alters the intensity. You probably can't see it well because I've got a lamp on, but if I turn the lamp off, you can see how well that uh, is, is done. That's a really nice feature. And also, if you want to turn the AG and the AA backlights off, you can. So that's the backlight functiona functionality. Oh, I forgot to mention the, the radar elevation. Uh, I know someone who reviewed the stick said it's quite sharp. But I don't have that issue at all. It's a really nice feel. It's got high resistance, so you can really put minute input into it. I do like that there. Some aircraft, I, I have that as another switch, another axis. And a good thing as well, you can actually switch to mode so it's button down, center, and button up. So most axes on the throttle you can change to single button modes. Now we're going to move on to the negatives of the flight stick. Start off, we have the thing that is reported most, I'd say, in, in review videos, which is the suction cups. Any prolonged pull on the stick releases the suction cups you can see there generally in flight i don't really have much of a problem unless i'm in sustained pulls on the stick so in a dogfight or anything that is me using the full axes where you hit the stop it's not so bad side to side but back it's quite bad you can tighten these so it removes the sort of small movement from the plastic to the metal but generally you can feel it sort of pop when you pull back and then you have a bit of time until the suction cups release and then it will snap. I can honestly say this has only happened a few times, but when it has happened, it's been critical moments. So when you're flying and you're doing a pull and it completely snaps, you know, you lose your focus. And especially in VR, you lose your focus because you can't see it happening. When you've got your headset on you can't see it and because you're immersed in the game with the noise and everything you can't always feel it either so sometimes you just get this snap which is not great but if you want a desk mounted hotas this is something you're going to have to live with and to be honest from what i've seen online this is the best mounting system they've got which is the suction cups even though it's a negative it's something that you put up with because you've got a desk mounted stick Obviously, you can take this mount off and put an actual proper mount on that goes either in between your legs or underneath your desk. That's your choice. As it stands as a desk mount, that is the only problem with that mounting on the desk. This other th issue may be and it may be a problem for some users. It's not necessarily for me, and that's that is is that there is no hand rest. 
Now, obviously, they've stuck to the replica design of the stick where there actually is no real ha hand rest. So in long periods of flying, your wrist is having to do a lot of work to stay up because how the sort of stick works with access to all the buttons, rather than slouching down like this, you see you can't reach. You need to be a little bit more up, almost parallel with the, the vertical part of the stick. So it's almost like this. Where your button, where your where your thumb can easily reach the, all the buttons without much stress. Now, luckily, my armrest on my chair is adjustable, and I fill it up all the way, and therefore I can actually rest. I'm sitting a little bit far back at the moment, but I can actually rest my elbow on the armrest, and it's not too much of a strain. Obviously, if you've got if you're if you're a bit smaller and you've got smaller arms, it might be it might be a bit more difficult. But I'm quite tall, so I've got longer arms and it's not much of an issue i've never had my hand or my arm or my wrist aching from long flight next based on that point sometimes in flight you slouch and sometimes if you're if you're not doing anything you know major you're just sort of doing level flying you might even slouch to to use a stick like this and obviously every, everyone does their own thing and in that situation everything is slouched and that means you can't reach the buttons as easy as easily as i just said before so sometimes i'll be flying like this with my fingers around the neck of the stick where i can, I can get a little bit more ac accuracy of control now my thumb always has access to the weapons station selection and the wheel brake the nose wheel steering and the trigger not these so obviously you've got your trim you've got your screen selection designator and your pickle weapons release button so when you're in combat or you're in air to ground mode your hand wants to be up here so you can have easy access to three and i can say that access to those are good but we'll discuss that in the positives just for when normal flying for me this is comfortable and when this is comfortable i have to reach a little bit the trim not so much this not so much because you have this here which you can grab and use all of the button the trim you can pull down it's because it's got a nice grain to it you can easily grip it left right up and down push the pickle button you sort of because it's quite a tall button comes out quite a bit you, you know you're sort of pushing up against it where you have to go down on it so you can see what i'm doing here so i'm going to casual flying pickle button casual flying pickle button you can see what my my hand's doing Obviously, if this was in between my legs, I wouldn't have a problem. If I had a desk mount, it wouldn't be a problem. I'm willing to live with that sacrifice. So the next thing is the wheel brake. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn the stick so you can see it. This is the wheel brake button that is on the default, and I have it on that as well. Obviously, there isn't a switch like this on the real stick because they have foot brakes. So it's nice of them that they put this in. But all it is is a plastic paddle pushing a button. If they're going to add this in, they might as well have added something mechanical or nice. This is quite a thin piece of plastic here, which you can almost feel like you could break off or snap off. Even if they didn't want to add anything mechanical, they could have made it taller because my pinky finger sits right on the edge. And sometimes I want it to go in the crevice like that. So you can just, you know, it's casually there. But a lot of the time it's up here. And obviously, I know you're not using it in flight so this is not much of a big deal something they could have done which is nice you know this isn't a cheap stick so i think it would have been a nice thing to do the other thing which is very annoying this is a really big niggle for me in the simap pro and the mapping each button has a number so for example you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten what they haven't done is they haven't changed the numbers from the hotas to the stick so one on here is just one on its own and on the throttle there's a button one as well and that means that when you're in an exterior program that's not part of dcs that can't distinguish what your game input is i.e discord push to talk it can't distinguish between throttle and stick so my push to talk button on my throttle which is not even connected to the stick is also the left push on the weapon station select and on the hornet that is the sparrow when I select the sparrow, even though it's one click, I get the Discord push to talk to come on. This could happen for a number of other buttons that you may use in the exterior programs other than DCS. So say if you've got something else mapped, SRS for example, anything like that. If the number matches the throttle or vice versa, 
when you click the corresponding button with the same number, it's going to activate it, even though that might not be your selection. That is a big niggle for me. What they could have done is they could have named this 1A and the throttle 1B or anything like that. Simple, simple changes they could have done to avoid that crossover from happening. This might not affect people. It certainly has affected me. Resistance. The resistance is not changeable. You cannot adjust the resistance in any shape or form. This, for me, isn't a major deal. You know, like I play DCS, but I'm no way professional gamer or anything like that. So the resistance isn't a big deal. I mainly fly the Hornet. It's designed to be the Hornet. You know, it, it, it's not a massive deal for me. General ergonomics. It's not the best stick to use in the world. I would openly admit that because of its ergonomics, because it doesn't have a hand rest and wrist rest. And, you know, because it's quite tall, it's not going to be the most comfy stick to use, I admit. However, I like it. It works for me. It's a damn sight better than anything else I've used before. It's going to improve your flying and accuracy. Stick positives this time. What do I think? This makes the HOTAS what it is because the thrust was quite generic. Even though the buttons and the labels are say what it is on the Hornet, this feels like you've got the Hornet grip in your hand. Whether you've got it showing in game or not, this feels right. And it feels like everything should be where it needs to be. All the major controls that I need for combat are on this stick and not anywhere else. Apart from the TDC slew and a few other buttons on the throttle which are at your fingertips anyway. The design of it, I think it's really nice. It's a heavy feeling stick but it doesn't feel too heavy in your hand. This sort of fake leather thing they put on there is a really nice cosmetic touch. It's clean. It, there's no mess. The wire comes out the back. You can't see it. It is clean and tidy. It just works quite well. Every single button is nice on the stick. Apart from the brake that I spoke about before, the buttons and the axes are really nice. Everything's labelled, which I like as well. The station select button, it's at an angle. And I like that because you actually fly the stick at an angle you don't fly it dead straight you sort of the stick is pointing a little bit left but your hand is sort of straight so that your thumb on this fits perfectly because the tactile feeling on that is a little bit offset so you sort of know where you need to put your hand for it to, for you to be able to control everything properly and that is really nice everything is easy i love the trim it's just push up from here pull down from here left right and it's got everything's got a really nice feel the reset is really nice the deep button that you can feel and that click is different to that click pickle button you know when you find something on other sticks i've used you know you're not always 100 percent sure you've pushed it properly you know you've pushed that on the trigger i've actually personally never used the first detent for anything i have the second detent mapped for the trigger for the laser and the gun I've never used the first detent, but I kind of like it because sometimes you might be squeezing the stick. If you're in a tense situation, you're squeezing and you might sort of clench your index finger a little bit. And when you hit the first detent, you're like, oh, you, need, you know, you need to release. So that second detent is nice. At first, I thought it was quite hard to push, but either it's worn a little bit or I've just gotten used to it. It's a nice solid feel. And when you release it, it you know, it sort of pushes your finger back up away from it, which I like. The best thing on this stick for me, this little toggle here. Now it's, you've got an up, up left, up right, left, left, right, down right, down left, down and push. Some people might use this for TDC, some people might use this for other things. I use it for my left and right mouse click button. Left mouse click button, right click button. And then this is just my flare zoom in and out. And the reason why I have it there is because my thumb is always going to be able to reach there from any angle where I hold the stick and it doesn't intrude with any of the buttons. It's set lower. So even if I have my hand here, my thumb here or my thumb here, it's never it doesn't even brush, doesn't even go anywhere near that one. That's why I love that placement there. It is perfect. So all we've got to do in VR is look at a button, click, look at a button, click. And it's not a click. It's like a soft movement. It doesn't make any noise so it's not like you have to put a lot of resistance in to use it you can actually switch to mode to make it a fully controllable axis if you want which i think some people might use but i prefer it on the buttons as it works perfectly for my global on the mouse brilliant stick especially the feel of the buttons on this and the actual feel of the stick i know some people might say like oh, it's, it's got like a you know metal has quite a cold feeling to it. it doesn't feel 
you know that nice in in your hand but this this almost feels like a soft plastic but but good quality even though it's metal it's it's i don't i don't really know how to describe it, it it's just a really nice feel in your hand because the stick isn't actually that heavy it's the cams in here which make it feel heavy and the other good thing is as well if you want to spend a little bit more money you can actually have a z-axis plug which goes onto here i think it's something like 50 dollars on the win win website I don't have it because I'm going to get some proper rudder pedals and they also don't recommend using it. I don't know why. It just says on the website, we don't recommend you buy it, but I don't know why they'd say that. So if you can't afford a good set of rudder pedals or you just don't want to use them, but don't have the space, you also have the option of adding, adding that Z axis. And the other thing is you can also buy an attachment for the Warthog base, which means that you can have this stick with the Thrustmaster Warthog base rather than you spending stupid Warthog prices on a F-18 stick which actually I don't think is anywhere near as good as this one in terms of quality you can have the normal Warthog and you can have this stick as an addition on there bit of Chinese copy in there but who's complaining because that is a really nice thing they've done there and it means that you're not confined to one manufacturer, one make. The one thing I do like about the resistance is, is that it's kind of progressive. See, it's not going to be as much as a mechanical stick. This obviously is, is on cam, so it's a bit different to a proper mechanical stick. This sort of axis here is where you live, in my opinion. You don't really go that far outside of that, unless you're in dogfighting or, you know, extreme combat maneuvers where, you know, you're doing this and you're doing this. This is your comfort zone. And in that zone, there is very little resistance. It's very easy. And I like that because it means that the stick is telling you that this is the comfort zone of the aircraft. This is this is where you are not pulling any Gs. You know, you're not doing anything extravagant. When you do want to do combat harsh maneuvers, the stick is telling you because of the resistance. Now, obviously, in VR, this makes a massive difference because you can't see where the stick is. But you can feel where the stick is. Wherever you move it, you can feel it. I close my eyes now, I know exactly where it is. It is a nice feeling. The only downside to that is, is that inside the stick, it's like a square. So it's not really like a circle. So I can't do a smooth movement between the X and Y axes. Can you see it stops down in the corner and then I go on the X axes and then on the Y axes where what it should be, it should be like a gradual curve on the edge where wherever you push it and you move it should be a curve but it's a square again not a big deal i don't really notice it
Okay then, so final thoughts. Really pleased I bought this Hotas system. Obviously I have described a lot of negatives. These are just stuff I have to outline because it's a review video and I have to go through everything even though my view is going to be biased. Ultimately, the stick is fantastic. The throttle is fantastic. The software is really good. Really pleased with the build quality. I actually think that it has improved my flying a lot in terms of accuracy and ease of multiple controls without having to use any modifiers. My dependency on mouse and keyboard has been almost eradicated. I barely use any of them in flight. The only thing that I mainly use the mouse is the scroll wheel. I would have liked to scroll wheel on the home task to be honest, but it's not a deal breaker. And as I said, it's really reasonably priced for actually what you get compared to other systems that are out there. Hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it was quite a long one today. I just wanted to get through everything. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on the video. Any questions about the HOTAS or DCS in general, feel free to put in the comment section and I'll reply. Thanks again for watching. Silverback signing off.